fans, I am Dolores Williams of DWSV. Stand up. I want to thank my sponsors for making these podcasts possible. Pernaconas Ristorante has been serving pizza and homemade pasta and rolls in San Diego since 1946. The restaurant is located at 9933 Mercy Road at Scripps Park, Poway Parkway. You can get special catering and events. For the best real estate service in San Diego, contact Paula Witzel at San Diego County Real Estate, 619-585-0945. Go to www.lealrealty.com or Paula at realestate.com. Henry A. Martinez is the change needed in Chula Vista. He is running for the city council in District 3. He is the only homeowner running in this race. He is a 32-year Navy veteran, decorated Afghanistan war veteran. Mr. Martinez is an honest man of high character. Our district needs a person that is 100% committed to the community of Chula Vista www.martinez for the number four citycouncil.com. Arthur Schaefer, organizing director, mass resistance, an effective international pro family group fighting for 25 years the LGB agenda, indoctrination of our children, stop the drag queen story hours corrupt sex ed curricula, and bad legislation across our country. Arthur Schaefer can be reached at 781-474-3005 or Arthur at massresistance.com. Thank you, thank you. You are in for a treat today. Please be sure to watch the podcast. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to DWS View. Stand up. If we do not stand up for what we believe, who will? This is Dolores Williams, and I want to welcome you and thank you for returning. If this is if you're coming back, if it's your first time, thank you for joining this podcast. And I know that you're gonna enjoy it. Now, today I have a very special guest, very special lady that we love dearly. And I'll tell you, her name is Gail Levin. And Gail is, she wears a lot of hats and she needs about four or five more hands. But uh, she is director of the Salt and Light Council and he trains affiliate leaders and then oversees their biblical citizenship ministries for churches and organizations. She serves alongside Salt and Light founder and president, Dran Reese. I'll tell you, Dran is a powerhouse lady, an awesome woman of God, and she just puts her money where her mouth is. And so Gail and Dran make a fantastic team. They do a lot of work. Anyway, so Gail also assists in various ministries and organizations, including Secretary of the Board of Salt and Light, Public School Exit, and an initiative that assists parents in looking for alternatives to government-funded schools. And there's a lot more here to tell, and I can't tell it all, but she is an award-winning uh, award -winning writer, and she's a manager and editor of the Salt and Light's monthly maintenance newsletter it educates mobilizes and activates believers and if you're not getting that salt and light newsletter on a monthly basis you're missing out on some good information so i want to compliment gail on an excellent job on that newsletter and to each of you help me welcome my friend gail levin welcome gail how are you today well, hi, Dolores, and everybody who's watching. It's so good to be with you. I am well. I am blessed. Um, and, and we have just 
really, really great things to share today, and I'm anxious to get us started. So thank you so much for that. Hey, man. Great. That is wonderful, Gail. Uh, well, we will go ahead and get started. And the first thing we want to do, Gail, is we want to look at, because you're involved in so many things, and I'm looking forward to these discussions today, but I want you to tell my audience about the Salt and Light Council. Sure. Well, as you said, Dran Reese, our founder and president, started the Salt and Light Council in 2008 as a response to a constitutional amendment here in California that we were voting on called Prop 8. And it meant that only men and women could be married, you know, not, not anything else, that that was God's divine order. And uh, the Lord showed Dran that what she was doing in organizing churches should continue. And so she started the Salt and Light Council. And so we've been going since then. I've been with her for the last, I don't know, seven or eight years, but really from the beginning in different roles as well. And what we do is we, our main thing is to train churches, organizations, and groups around America to have a civic serve ministry called a biblical citizenship ministry in their church. And that's, that's in a nutshell. So Gail, and with that, why are salt and light biblical citizenship ministries needed at churches across this country? Why are they needed? Well, if you think about church involvement in the culture, you will realize that we have lost a lot of ground and we need to regain it. And what a salt and light biblical citizenship ministry does is it, 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 it educates, mobilizes, and activates citizens in the church to be in the role of missionary, so to speak, to government, education, um, media, and it gets our voice out there. We start to have an effect again on all of these areas. Yeah, that's great. And, and God does tell us that as Christians, we are to be salt and light in the culture. Because guess what? If the church is missing and not being salt and light, then a lot of stuff we see happening today that's why it's happening, because in, in many cases, the church is absent. Absolutely. It, that's, that, the name Salt and Light was such a great choice, because that's exactly what we need to be doing. And too often, Christians hold back. They're not allowing themselves to be involved. They don't think it's their place, even, to be involved. And nothing could be further from the truth. The Lord says to his body, um, who will stand up for me. And, and I'm, I'm Jewish, and in Hebrew, the word is hineni, hineni, who will, here am I, send me. And so the Lord is looking for you out there, who's listening to this right now, to be his salt and light in the culture. Wherever you are, you're part of what God is doing in this generation. Yes, and that's, that's so true. And you know, the purpose of this podcast each week, God brings it. He brings a conversation and your, your conversation today is timely because the church needs to be activated. It needs to be mobilized. And it needs to be very involved in, in the things that are happening in our culture. And, and, and I just see such a lack of, of God and a lack of, of, of fear and even sharing with people. Uh, myself, it's like we want to separate politics and we want to separate that from God. But God doesn't separate it because they're intertwined. They go hand in hand. Yeah, absolutely. For one thing, there's strength in numbers. And what we do is we ask the congregation, the pastor, to send us one person, just one person. And we train that person to lead a ministry called the Biblical Citizenship Ministry. And then they go and they share all the resources and tools that we provide on an ongoing basis with everybody so they know exactly how to take action. It's, it's so easy, and it just requires people to send one person to us for training. Why do you think churches uh, seem to be reluctant to do that? I think it's because of the uh, political divide, if you would, um, thinking that you know church and state is separated when it really means that the state should stay out of the church, not the other way around. Also, if I may share this, my little elevator speech, Dolores, really quick. Sure. Okay. All right. So. Think of politics as governmental authority because what it means is authority over a land. And God gave all authority to Jesus in heaven and on earth. And he is with us as we carry that authority into the public square. 
And so we're kind of like firemen, okay? We are supposed to go into a burning house and put out fire. Now look at the house of politics, which is just authorities, neither good nor bad, as a burning house of corruption. And it's corruption that we're all running from. And so what we are supposed to do is go into that fire and save people. Think salvation, the gospel. We're supposed to save people from that fire and bring them to safety, not run away with the people. And so we are supposed to be, again, missionaries into that area, not running away from it. It's yes. perfectly biblical to be political. <laughs> yes, I agree. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, I want to talk about, um, you know, the elections are right around the corner, Gail. Would you share with our audience the resources that are available on the Biblical Voter website? That is an awesome website with a lot of good resources. I want you to tell, tell everyone about it so they can go there. Oh my gosh, well, do you have an hour? <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you go to www.biblicalvoter.com, you are going to be blessed because we want to help you to become biblically correct, not politically correct, okay? What we do on that site is we give you a lot of tools and resources, including a comparison chart of the political parties. There are pol political parties at platforms political party platforms and the major parties we have taken those two parties and we have drilled down the differences in their um in, in what they say that their party believes what their beliefs are now the republican party has not changed their platform for the last four years but the democratic party their new platform is about 92 or 93 pages so you want somebody to do that work for you so if you go to that uh party platform comparison you can see you can download it. It's a PDF. It's, it's for your use. And, you know, go at it. Another thing on Biblical Voter is, hey, do you know who's running in your state for elections? Do you want to know what their values are? In a nonpartisan way, we put all the state voter guides that we can find that are, are the most excellent in the country there for you. So whatever state you're in, Go to the state voter guides and look yourself up. Look up your state. You can register to vote through that site. Um, you, can, you can also see what the differences are in the party platforms. We even have something called, um, as you well know, Dol Dolores, we have a Families First Pledge. You can actually go and find a candidate and ask them to sign a pledge that they believe that you know, in their pro-life and, and that they will vote that way. Uh, marriages between a man and a woman. Um, you know, their economic policy, et cetera. And if they send us a copy of what they've signed, we will post them on, on, a, um, on another platform saying who signed that pledge so people know what that candidate's values are. So those are just some of the things that we have on that site. You know, I wanna share just a few of the things from the uh, party platform. Uh, Bishop Ed Hodges put out a wonderful document and I'm just gonna share a few of the contrasts between the parties. I won't read them all because I want you to go to this website and I want you to go there and print this out and see for yourself. Uh, we're here to share biblical information and share the truth with people. But here's one. One party mentions the Bible, the other doesn't. One mentions divine, the other doesn't. One mentions creator, the other, do other doesn't. And I'm just gonna go through one mentions prayer, saying praise, pastors, Catholic preaching, bipartisan, fathers, and uh, I'm just, I'm just going to read just the one word here because I just want you to have an idea of the difference. Morality, strong families, religious liberty, traditional family, inalienable rights, traditional marriage, sanctity of human life, traditional family values, traditional religious belief, our Judeo-Christian heritage, the Declaration of Independence, God bless America, and on and on and on. Now, one of these parties mentions these things. The other does not mention them in their platform. And these are critical to our founding, the founding of this country are based on the Bible, on biblical values. And so this is just a little sampling of what's in there. And I would certainly invite you to hear Gail's message to go to that website 
and you will be blessed with the information that you will learn. And with these upcoming elections, if you are a Christian, we can't vote based on party. We have to vote based on the Bible. What does God's word say? We are Christocrats first. We're Christocrats. We're, we're, we are citizens of heaven, again, who are missionaries into government. So we have, we want to, God wants us to align ourselves with his values. Something that's really cool about everything that you just read, Morris, is that it's also available as a video. So you can actually, it's about seven minutes, and you can take that video and you can share it with other people on your Facebook page or your social media. Uh, you can show it at your congregation, at your church, uh, and, and it's there, it's there for you to use. Everything we put out is for your use. And we, we, we just give it to you. We give it freely in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, that is wonderful. Now, uh, another critical part of the Salt and Light ministry is public school exit. And please go into detail about that. And we know parents with children been out of school, Gail, and the school's been shut down all of these months. Uh, some parents have been shocked at what they have seen with what, what their children have been taught and what they're learning. Right. Now, you know, it gets a little confusing here because we're mentioning different things that we do. So let me just say this. Yes. Just go to our website for Salt and Light, www.saltandlightcouncil.org. It will pull up a graphic for you with our different ministries. So the main one, of course, is the Salt and Light Council because we want you to take everything you're hearing today and multiply it by having lots of people hear it and be able to respond to God's call on their lives. So just go to www.saltandlightcouncil.org and you'll see all of these different initiatives that we're mentioning now plus more. Now, as far as public school exit, there's been a terrible thing happening in America. It's more than a hundred years old because there's been an incremental change in our education system by people who want to change our governmental system. And so what we have done is we have seen the light. We have seen the handwriting on the wall, that it's time to do something new, something different. And this actually started about 20, 30 years ago where people are starting to take their children out of government funded public schools and find alternative ways to school their children. This is extremely important right now. The public schools have really bought into a different agenda that you could call it socialism, or you could call it communism, Marxism. It's a social agenda to infiltrate our children, our schools, our institutions from the inside to fundamentally change us. And as biblical citizens, the real stake here is will we be free as biblical citizens to be who we are in Jesus Christ? and to promote the gospel. And so Public School Exit was created as a way to help parents to find alternate means of educating their children outside of anything that has government funding so that you are free to come and go to, to, to worship God and, and to teach your children God's values. And Dolores, if you want, I'll take a few minutes to just get a little bit further into it. Oh, Would you like that? yes, sure. Okay, so what we have done is we, Dran Reese, again, what she did is she's formed some really good partnerships. And she's brought together people who have been doing this for a long time, but they weren't doing it together. And so now Public School Exit is a landing page for them to share with you what they are doing. And so we have different uh, links on the page. You can find other options, you know, school options. You can find uh, the laws for your state, whether the laws for your state as far as homeschooling. We have homeschooling groups that have joined us. We have churches that want to start to have schools for children who are joining us. We have a Q&A page. How do I get started? One of the main problems for parents is how do I get started in taking my child out of a public school system and finding an, a, a, another option that will allow us to, to school our child as we want to. One more problem in the schools, of course, right now is that they are not only socially indoctrinating your child, they are sexually indoctrinating your child as well. 35 states at this point have some kind of comprehensive sexuality education that they are forcing down the school system into, into the homes and to the hearts of your children, stealing 
their sexual purity. And that has to stop. That has to stop. So these are some of the things. And, and Dolores, would you like to hear why parents are not doing this more often, taking their kids out? Okay, I think the main reason is they don't want to believe this is really happening. Denial is really, really strong. It's so convenient to have somebody else raising our children. You drop them off at nine in the morning, you pick them up at three, and uh, you come home and, and you feed them dinner and you do homework with them and put them to bed and you're good. Those days have ended. And we actually started public school exit before, before the pandemic began. So we were in position when the pandemic began that we did not know, of course, was even coming. So now all parents have had an opportunity in this country to know what it's like to get to know their child's education in one form or another. And we want to help you to continue that. So if you go to www.publicschoolexit.com, click on there and start to browse. Again, you can go straight through the Salt and Light website. We have all of these links up on, on a graphic for you to click on as well. Yes, thank you, Gail. <clears throat> yeah, that's a lot of good information. You know, I saw something very disturbing uh, <laughs> this week. There was a, a classroom right here in San Diego uh, that had a gay flag and a big Black Lives Matter sign in the classroom. And, and I've been talking about this every week and every chance I get, I'm gonna say it. The Black Lives, Black Lives Inc, let's be confused. Black Lives Matter, yes. But Black Lives Matter, the organization, is the one that is a radical organization. And what they teach is against this country. And they are a Marxist group, their words. And they are doing everything that they can to bring down America. And they have said so. They have said they will destroy this country. And they are to destroy our president from being reelected. That's just a fact. And, and, and I say this because the American people need to know we have a choice in November. And it's so critical who we vote for because it's not about Democrat or Republican. It's about the survival of this country. And it's about, do you want to live in a country that's like Cuba, China? You know, China was free at one time. And, and the, the communists took over China. And guess what they did to the people? They killed a lot of people. They put people in, in prison camps and you can't not go against your government. You can't, you don't have a voice. Matter of fact, we have people, I'm just saying this, we have people right here in America that don't have voice. Christians are losing their voices. I was looking yesterday and I don't know if you ladies saw this. There was a, 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 t a lady at her child's football game. She was sitting in the stand. Basically she was social distance. There was nobody around her. She was sitting there watching her son play football because she didn't have on a mask. They tased this lady and they dragged her off of the field, arrested her. And, and there was a man out in an outdoor setting with other Christians singing songs without a mask. This man was arrested right here in America. Now, these are just two examples. And that's why we bring these things up because we want people to know this is real. Now, if you want to live in an, in, in America where you have like Cuba, for instance, we know what happened with Cuba. We know the people of Cuba are not free. The people of Venezuela are not free. They have a dictator. We do not want any one person dictating over us. That's why God created this country as a republic so that we have the freedoms and the freedoms we have, they come from God. They don't come from man. So that's who we honor. We honor God. And the reason we bring these things up, it's just so you know, you have got to do your research. And everything we do is, is to honor God and to honor his word. So. Well, I, I, that's, I love that you are getting to the specifics. I did, I did hear the story about the man who was arrested. Um, I want to tell everybody three letters that are very important for this election, the letters V-I-P, V-I-P, not very important person this time, but vote in person. It's very important that you vote in person where you are able to do so, so that your, your mail-in ballot is not tampered with. 
when you vote in person, it goes right into a machine and, and it goes through. When it's mail-in ballot, other hands are touching that ballot, no matter how you do it. And so vote in person as much as you can. And, and Dolores, again, your message is so important that we get this message out. What you're hearing today is so important. And so again, just one person, your congregation, your organization, your group, let us train them in how to bring these kinds of messages to the whole congregation. And one more thing, God is on the move. What you've heard today is not the end of the story. No, not by a long stretch. He who's in us is greater than he who's out in the world. And so even now, we have a church right here in California. They baptized a thousand people this last week. Usually they had maybe, you know, big numbers, three to 400, but a thousand, that's like more than three times as much. So people are turning to the Lord during this stressful time. And so God is working. And so if, wherever you are, if you're depressed or if you don't feel hopeful, know that God is there for you. This is not bad news this is good news because god is on the throne and he is in control and he loves you i can't agree more i can't agree more you just said it <clears throat> and thank you for pointing out about people voting in person that is so critical and and i wish i wish every one of us who know the critical nature of voting in person if you can go and drop your ballot off, <clears throat> you can vote in person. I don't care if you have to wait in line. It is critical because there are forces at stake right now that plan to steal this election, and we know it. Vote in, in and all the mail-in ballots across this nation are not designed because of COVID. They were designed to steal elections. And we have, uh, I believe, Gail, in California, 17 additional days that we have after the election to count ballots. Now, why we, what are we gonna do in 17 days that we cannot get our ballots counted and accounted for and mailing out ballots to every single person, whether they're dead or alive, and there's cheating that has happened, ballot harvest, and all these things have impacted our elections in a negative way and they will this time, and which is why that needs to be pointed out about the fraud that can happen when people do not vote in person. Yes, and um, what can I say, Dolores? Uh, we all have the responsibility to vote. Yes. And to vote biblically. Yes. It, it's, it's incumbent on each of us to understand that we are a nation of the people, by the people, and for the people. And if you have been misled into thinking that somebody else has control over your life, think again. This country, these people serve us who we elect. They serve us. And so our authority, again, our biblical authority is to go into the political, governmental realm. In fact, I wanna just point out, we have some wonderful people in office we have people who love the Lord and have left good careers as dentists and doctors and lawyers and different things because the Lord told them to get involved. And do you know what they're called? They're called politicians. Politicians. So how can, how can we leave them in the political realm and think that that's bad and we shouldn't be involved when they're there? We, we, have, to, we have to not only have their backs, but we have to support their legislation. They're counting on us. And so please register to vote. Please vote biblically. Learn how, what that means. Become a high information biblical voter. Please. And on that note, thank you, Gail. Thank you so much for the information that you shared today. And I know it's going to be an impact, have an impact on people who listen to it and who watch it. I want to thank you and thank my audience once again for coming back and listening to all you, my friends. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and also don't forget if you would like to be a sponsor I would love to have you be a sponsor of this show and you can reach me at dwsviewstandup at gmail.com and I'm I'm just waiting to hear back from you and I would love to hear back from you and get your feedback 
on these on these uh, recordings. And Gail, I thank my audience now. I want to ask you to close us in prayer, and then we'll be done for the day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dolores. Father, we just turn to you now in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I especially pray for those out who've listened to this message out there who may be struggling with some of the things we spoke to. The Lord says, if you will turn to him today and give him your heart, he will forgive any sins and he will give you a fresh start. And so, Lord, we turn this time to you that you speak to the hearts of everybody who hears this right now in the future and that they know that they are loved by you and that you are there for them. They just need to ask. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen.